Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice exponential logarithmic equation. Kind of both. It's a nice mixture. It's a nice mixture. We have x to the power ln x equals ln x to the power x. Now, do not confuse this with ln x, the quantity, to the power x because they are different things. All right? So it's more like this, even though we don't necessarily write the parentheses. We could have. So we have the following, and how do we handle this? Now, this equation in and of itself, like, is not very easy to handle, so we're going to be using some interesting tools. One of the tools, actually, is something that we almost always use. If you've seen uh, my other videos, you should probably be familiar with that method, and it starts with S. Anyways, so guess and check is totally fine, but can we find all solutions? So that, that's what we're going to take a look at. First step, I'm going to use properties of logs because this guy over here actually can be moved to the front, right? Because when you have um, something to the power and then you ln it or log it, then power can be moved to the front. And it's very, very easy to prove by definition of logs. So x can be moved. This gives us something nicer, x ln x equals x times ln x. I mean, x to the power ln x equals x times ln x. I said x ln x. All right. So, we have this equation, and why is it nicer? Well, we got rid of uh, the one of the exponents, which is a variable. So now we only have one variable in the exponent, and we'll take care of that too. And you probably know if you have an exponent and you want to get rid of that, what would you do? Log both sides, or just ln both sides. Same thing, right? Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and uh, do... Let's go ahead and log both sides so we can simplify this expression. All right, and I'm going to use ln because we already have an ln x. You could use log or any other base. You can even use base x, but I don't think it's going to make it easier. So ln both sides, and I could probably do this, you know, take this guy, move it a little that way, uh -oh. like this, and then we can go ahead and ln both sides like this. So that way you can see, hey, I am lnning both sides or natural logging both sides. Okay, you see what I'm saying? Now, because I log both sides with base e, then I can also move this power. You see, when you have something like x to the power ln x, this power cannot be moved until you log the expression. Make sense? That's why logging is good. So now go ahead and move it to the front, ln x times ln x, which is super duper nice, gives us now, we have a product. What do you think? If you have a product and you have to log it, um, the log of a product can be written as the sum of two logs. So we can write this as ln x. And I'm not using parentheses. I hope you don't mind because I don't like writing ln x like this because ln x is fine. I hope you're fine with that. Please do. Okay, so this is not good. This is good. Now, this gives me ln x plus ln ln x. Of course, I'm going to use parentheses here and not write it like ln ln x, right? That's kind of crazy. Anyways, so what? I got this and this is even crazier than the original one, right? This is kind of crazy. What am I going to do with this? Well, we'll use our superpowers, which is called substitution. Yay, that's what the word started with. Like S, it's also a superpower. So let's go ahead and call ln x t. Again, t is good, so let's use it. Now, this becomes t, this becomes t, this becomes t. That's nice. A lot of t's. So, t also, you know, like a t-shirt, but anyways. t squared equals t plus ln t. Mm. Mm. This equation looks familiar. Maybe um, Black Man Red Pen made a video on this a while ago. I don't know. I, I don't remember, but this kind of looks like Wolfram, what is it called? Not Wolfram Alpha, I was going to say W. Oh, Lambert's W function, maybe we can use that, right? But no, nah, mm -mm. there's a better way. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to put T squared minus T on the T on the left hand side. Obviously, Lambert's W is helpful in most cases. And but you know what, it's kind of like using a calculator sometimes. Anyways, so notice that uh, T squared minus T can be factored. Ooh, t equals 1 makes it 0. Oh, t equals 1 makes both sides 0. How do I know that? Set equations equal to 0, and you'll see. Why am I setting it equal to 0? Just, 
I'm hoping to find a common solution. And I did find one. Yay, surprise. So now we know that t equals 1 is a common solution. Great. And we're going to find x from here. But is that the only solution? That is the million dollar question. And we're going to look at that. I'm going to show you a graph. Actually, I'm going to show you two graphs one of which is going to be the this t squared minus t business. Uh, by the way, t squared minus t is a parabola. Such a weird name for a quadratic equation. Anyways, and ln t is logarithmic. So interesting graphs. You'll take a look. Okay, so t equals 1 works, and t equals 1 implies what? What is t? t is ln x. Okay, great. So ln x equals 1. You can do e to the power both sides or just think about the definition and from here you get x equals e. Great. So x equals e is a solution for sure. And if you go back to the original problem and not the very original original but kind of like the kind of original problem. The plug in e, e to the ln e is e to the 1 which is e. e ln e is e times 1 which is e. e, e. Great. So we have an agreement on the e's. That's good. So x equals e works. Now let's go ahead and take a look. But here's one thing that I want you to think about. It's a common root, but also something else is happening. Let me show you the graph real quick without further ado. The first graph that we're going to be looking at is the graph of the parabola and the logarithmic function. Uh-oh, they seem to be intersecting, crossing, touching at one point, which we call tangent. So these graphs seem to be tangent to each other, but how can you be so sure, right? Maybe Desmos just makes it look like that. Maybe you didn't zoom enough, so on and so forth, right? You can do all sorts of objections. But anyways, let's take a look at it from another perspective. I suspect there's a tangency. So what am I going to do? What was the other function? I forgot. I think it was LNT, right? Probably. Okay, yeah, the other one was ln t, good. So now suppose I have f of t and g of t, two functions of t, and I'm going to be checking, first of all, f of 1 equals g of 1, because they're both 0. Awesome. We already checked it, right? But when you look at the derivatives, 2t minus 1, 2t or not 2t, by the way, 2t is a word for <laughs> someone who is receiving tutoring services, like tutor 2t which is such a weird word, but anyways. So if you want to become a 2t, yeah, I can tutor you. Anyways, ln t, if you differentiate that, you get 1 over t, which is very special. Now, let's go ahead and check if the same thing happens for at t equals 1. Now, if you check f prime at 1, you get 1, and g prime at 1 also happens to be 1. They're both equal to the same thing. Therefore, we got the situation of tangency because this means these two graphs have a common point and the second means they have a common tangent. That can only happen if they're tangent to each other, right? There are probably exceptions, but I can't think of them right now. Anyways, they have a common tangent, which is cool, and you've seen it on the graph. If you don't believe that, ask Desmos, right? It'll tell you, and zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, until you see they don't intersect. Well, they'll always intersect, by the way. That's what I suspected first. Like, I thought they were not going to, but anyways. So x equals e is a unique solution because they're only touching at one point, and we found it. Yay! Let's go ahead and take a look at another graph. Uh, this time, we're going to be checking these two guys, but, ah, oh, man, the tangents... The derivatives are very messy. I don't think you want to do that. There is a formula or just uh, implicit or you can do ln both sides anyways. Let me show you the graph real quick and we'll finish up. It's been too long. So that was our first graph. Again, again first graph at t equals 1 uh, translates to x equals e. Yay. So it's sometimes easier to look at another graph. But if you wanted to look at these two graphs, very cool because they're kind of tangent from inside. Isn't that cool? Like beautiful? And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video, probably in an hour. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.